Hello everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. So here we are in a stable orbit around the red planet Duna. It's not exactly a perfectly equatorial orbit, in fact if we want to go to Ike later, we will have to correct that orbit, but for now, it's fine. And man, I just can't get over how good that looks. Look at those wispy clouds up there. So I think, uh, let's not, let's not waste any time. We are gonna just, we're gonna put a crew down there, so... I already put Jeb in the landing can, and let's take Bob, and let's just have him join him. I mean, why not, right? It's good to have a friend. I don't think the Kerbals actually, um, add weight to any of the crafts. I don't think. Don't, again, don't quote me on that. That's, that's like, common list of things that... I say in all my videos, I think it's this, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> one of these days I'll actually look up the proper answers, and that's another one of my quotes, one of these days. Whenever that day is, it's going to be a glorious day, because I'll finally figure out all the answers in the universe. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so we got two guys, Bob, Jeb, in the landing can over here. And they are going to go down <laughs> to the surface of Duna, and I'm just a little worried. I don't know. I just feel like something horrible might happen. Hopefully not, though. Um, so what I might do... We're getting towards the night side. I might just warp them around until we're back on the day side again. This way I feel like we have lots of time to finagle and, you know, do all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Back around towards the light side now. Sun has basically just risen over Duna, and that's fine. That's the way I want it. All right, just gonna do a little quick save in case something weird happens. We do have um, someone in here, Bill, I, th I believe. Yep, Bill is in here. Oh, nice view, except for this big docking port in the way. <laughs> so without further ado, let's just go ahead and decouple. No, we're not control from here. We want to undock. So we are no longer one with the craft, and I do believe, yeah, we're all filled up on these tanks, I believe. So we're just going to RCS away from it, because I don't want to smack into it. <clears throat> and I'm also going to point this craft, well, this moves way easier now, that's <laughs> such a big, thank god. I'm just going to point this thing north, so that when it comes time to... Uh, Re-rendezvous and re-dock. It'll be basically staying in this orientation for the rest of the time. Sorry to leave you, Bill, but, uh, you know, we've got bigger and better things to do. Close that docking shield up. God, that's cool. Alright. So, here we are in this thing. Oh, good, I, I remembered to put SAS on it. <laughs> I, like, had a panic for a second. I was like, oh, crap. All right, let's uh, let's consider our options here. Where do we want to land this thing? It's a little harder to see now because we got these clouds in the way. But um, I'd prefer not to land in any mountain areas, just because the parachutes might not open. I can always modify the parachutes, though. We have a nice ditch right here. <laughs> could go for that, or we can go for maybe somewhere in this like darker area that might be even better because uh... it looks flat looks nice and flat there let's see add a maneuver node i don't want to burn too much fuel adjusting my uh... thing thing though And by think thing, you know what I mean. I mean, I want to. I don't want to burn too much fuel adjusting the inclination. I think that'll be okay. Do something like that. Maybe I'll just bring it back down again, just because I don't want to really. I don't want to waste any fuel having to correct inclination. That's fine. That's a nice flat area. It looks like it's nice and dark. Maybe it was carved out by a meteor at some point. <clears throat> Yep, so we're going to do that. 
Let's see. Where's the other vessel? Yeah, it's still relatively close. Okay. Bob and Jeb look <laughs> stoic. I would too. Just want to get this stage activated here. Brilliant. Alright, we have a burn coming up in three minutes. It's not going to take too long. It's not going to tell us because it forgets how powerful this engine is. There's Ike. I do believe we'll be landing somewhere... yeah. We'll be landing somewhere where Ike will be up. Which is always fun. I like landing on a side duna where Ike is, because Ike doesn't really move. Ooh, let's just, uh... Oh, this is going to be a five-second burn. Ah, it's nothing. <clears throat> Practically deorbited ourselves already. <laughs> So we'll just warp ahead a little bit more just to get it right down. We'll do it right about there. Duna will rotate, of course, so we won't. Maybe like right there is probably okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so this is it, folks. So I might just do a save, just in case something horrible happens. And I might just modify... Oh, you know what I just realized? Oh, why did I make my parachute? Zero, I think. Okay, we can just hit zero. If not, I'll just move the staging around. Let's modify these chutes to open at a slightly higher altitude. Say, like, a thousand? Eight fifty? Maybe a thousand. Just because... Here we go. This thing's funny sometimes. Just because... Um, Duna, it's, the atmosphere is so thin. By the time we get to 500 meters, we might be like crashed already. I, <laughs> it might not be enough, so we'll just adjust the height. That'll be fine. So let's do this. Uh, well, you know, we should pull the uh, panels in. Push button one. This is the exciting part have our surface and our vessel information out. Okay. I don't I want to try to burn as less the least amount of fuel as possible <clears throat> in this whole event here. Cuz I'd rather not be stranded. <laughs> I mean, would you? Come on. So the other ship just continues to soar on ahead at its fixed altitude, whereas we are descending now, and we are inside the atmosphere now. That is it, folks. We are in. Let's get the landing gear out. Perfect. Let's go a little faster. Landing on planets with atmospheres is a little trickier than just landing on a moon, especially a planet like this. A lot of gravity compared to the moon or Minmus, so we have to kind of rely on these chutes to do a lot of the work for us. Once we get a little lower, I'm going to deploy them, and hopefully that'll give us a, a good about a you know, drag. I don't want to rip these... Um, I don't want to rip the spacecraft apart, basically, is what I'm saying here. So I think once we get to around 20 thou, I'm going to open the chutes, in fact. So let's open them now. Okay, so zero didn't do it. Oh, it did it? Yes, it did. It's turned blue, telling us that once it feels comfortable, it'll deploy. <laughs> At least I hope that's what it's saying. <laughs> it did turn blue, right? Am I, like, crazy? Alright, hopefully it did. Let's get a little. Let's go a little further. Probably once it hits the thicker stuff, it'll deploy. Ooh, is that a cloud? We're like, yeah, we're like following a cloud in here. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I'd love it if those shoots deployed. We are slowing down now because of drag. That is good. 
and we are still on target for our predicted area. <laughs> nice cloud following us in, how cool. Oh, there they go. Perfect. Shoots are deployed. We are 5,000 kilometers, or sorry, 5,000 meters from the surface. These are going to give us a good deal of drag. A third and fourth parachute probably would have been more ideal, but um, well, we are really getting there now. I'm just going to burn a little bit of fuel. Again, when these parachutes deploy... wanted to rip the spacecraft apart. Come on. Ooh, there we go. There we go. 2,800 meters per second left. Should be enough, hopefully, to get us back home off the planet three hundred meters wow how cool oh my gosh look at the dust storms oh my goodness Oh, okay. Oh, wow. We are down. We are down, baby. Woof. <laughs> we made it. We are on the surface of Duna. Holy crap. And it is a dusty place. It is a, a dusty, barren wasteland of a planet with a chalky gray sky. Red sand kicking up. Oh, look at those clouds over there. Oh, how freaking cool. And there's Ike somewhere. There's Ike up there. Amazing. First things first, let's do, let's get our work out of the way. Crew report. Uh, before we do that, let's hit button one. We'll get the panels back out so we can charge up the batteries again once we use them. 40 science. I feel like that should be a lot higher for Duna. I mean, come on. We're on a different planet for Christ's sakes. This is the first Kerbal kind to land on a different planet. Unbelievable. Mystery goo from the surface of Duna. 80 science. I'll take that. And let's take this materials study. 200 science. Everything is turned red. They'll never wash out of white spacesuits. You consider sending missions in pink EVA suits to reduce cleaning costs. How funny. Great. Let's get these guys down. <clears throat> I think Jeb should be the first Kerbal on the surface. What do you guys think? I think so. Alright, Jeb. Do your thing. Let's test out the gravity. Oh, it's definitely lighter. Lighter than Kerbin, that's for sure. Definitely heavier than the moon. Oh, the sandstorm has passed. Oh, wow. So they just, they just, like, make random sandstorm generations. That is so cool. It's clear now. We, so we landed in a bit of a storm, but j thanks to Jeb's piloting, he got us out of that mess rather nicely. And there's the NASA flag. This is Jeb on Duna. How cool. Take a surface sample. Grainy, very fine sand like dust, and it appears it's getting everywhere. Yep. So we'll keep that for 240 science. God, I hope we can get back home. <laughs> and uh, EVA report, the red sandcastles are plausible. <laughs> 
awesome. So let's get uh, let's get Bill out here. I'm not not Bill. Let's get Bob. Coming down the ladder. Cool. Let's grab Jeb. Bring him right next to him, basically. Smile for the camera, boys. Perfect. There's another good shot right there. Very pretty. Very cool. I am loving it. So let's do some... Let's, let's just kind of time warp and see what that... Uh, what it looks like. Maybe maybe some clouds will roll in. Maybe we'll have another dust storm. There's some clouds coming in. The sun is setting a little bit. Ike is staying right there, despite the sun setting. And Ike says, I don't follow those rules. I do what I want. You should see it from the surface of Ike. Duna just looks even cooler floating there. Oh, another dust storm's coming in. Another dust storm's coming in. This time it's over there on the other side. It's not quite near us. I love that. Oh, with the clouds. We need a picture with the clouds. That's what we need. That's what we needed, a picture with the clouds. I'm like a picture happy. <laughs> Alright. Let's see what night looks like on Duna. Oh, it was Sandstorm. Very dangerous for astronauts. Oh, wow. Like dusk on Duna. I gotta say, this probably looks the best out of any planet so far. Look at this. With this astronomer's pack, this just looks amazing. So let's see what total darkness looks like. Ah, oh, there we go. That is really something, you know that? Alright. <laughs> enough uh, enough with this crap. If you guys want to explore Duna, you go right ahead. Hopefully this video uh, helps you uh, get there. Um, and I hope that you do install this Astronomer's Pack, because it just... I mean, look at that dust storm coming in. It just makes it look so much cooler, so much better. And with that, I bid you all adieu. In the next episode, you can look forward to us blasting off from the surface, re-rendezvousing with our command module ship. And if I decide that we have enough fuel, which will be a big decision, we will jet out to Ike, and we will attempt a landing on Ike, which should be a little easier because it's a you know it's a moon, it's a lot lighter. Um, but if I, I feel like we don't have as much fuel, uh, I will say a very long apology and. <laughs> And um, we will do that, and maybe in another mission we'll go out to Ike and plant a flag and all that good stuff. Uh, but the next mission you can look forward to our decision in that matter. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you then.